Okay, today we're doing um, integrals of trig functions, and there's some tricks involved. Um, and there's just a couple things to remember, too. And I would go ahead and write these down if I were you. Um, just kind of make, you know, I, I think it helps to kind of make a list, you know, of some of this stuff. It's because this is pretty, you know, it's pretty uh, forward and instructional on the process of, of doing these. So if you, just, if you just write these down, make a little list, and just keep it by your side after you do uh, about. 10 or 12 problems, you'll pretty much have it in your head. So uh, the first one, it goes, you know, kind of like, well, you know, what do we do if we have like a, a power of a trig function? Um, you know, we can't really, uh, you know, maybe some of the identities don't completely work. Um, well, the, the best, there's usually a good way to memorize this. And if both powers of trig functions, okay, are odd, then you can usually just go ahead and do direct substitution. And another tip off is when you have like a trig function just sitting outside here by itself, and you know regardless of what this is, um, provided you know it's uh, you know you could it has a derivative sitting out there, you could usually go ahead and uh, kind of work with that. Okay, so actually we could probably just go ahead and do this. I'll, I'll just let sine or u equal sine x, and then du will equal cosine x. And see what see what I mean? You know, we had that we had that derivative of sine sitting out there, and there it is again. Okay, uh, so we can go ahead and, and say that this is u to the third. Um, I got a cosine x dx right there, so I can tack my du on there, and then pretty pretty soon this will end up right there, and then we just go back to sine x to the fourth plus c, you know, and we we, we knew how to do that one pretty good. So it's it's uh, about being comfortable with the uh, basics before we move on, okay? Um, the next case um, is, is a little different. Um, usually, if you have one power uh, it, that's odd, um, it doesn't matter which one it is, usually you can use the Pythagorean identity, okay? And we would do that I, what I would do is I would go sine squared x, cosine squared x, cosine x. Okay, and remember like I told you earlier, we have that lone trig function kind of sitting out here, right there. That's usually gonna tell you that, hey, everything's gonna be okay, and I can go ahead and uh, use a u substitution soon. Um, one thing I do want to do, I want to get rid of this cosine squared, so I'm going to write sine squared x. Cosine squared x is just 1 minus sine squared x cosine x. Remember that, and there's that Pythagorean identity I was talking about. Okay, um, let's see here. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and integrate this, I just drew an integration symbol there. And I can go ahead right off the bat, and I can go, let's see here, u equals sine x, du is going to be cosine x dx. So there I am right there. And then I can just tag my du on there. And after this, I can just distribute the uh, oops. Put your brackets in there, um, and then this is just going to be u to the third over three minus u to the fifth over five plus c. Ran out of room. I really wasn't looking at actually doing this whole thing. Uh, we're going to go over examples soon, but I just kind of want to show you. Um, Basically, just kind of copy these cases down is what we're going through. Um, the next um, next scenario you could run into is possibly a single trig function with an odd power. And still, your best bet is probably the Pythagorean identity. Um, now, what you'll want to do is go ahead and break this up, uh, the sine 5x business. I uh, probably want to break that up into sine to the fourth x times sine to the x. 
notice again I have that lone trig function sit, sitting out there by itself and this will be sine squared x raised to the second power sine x. See how I did that? I just broke up the, the fourth power into two uh, squares. Okay. And then from there, you could use the Pythagorean identity again. Squared and then sine x. Notice I didn't rewrite the whole integral and everything. I just some it's personal preference whether you want to uh, go ahead and do that or not. Um, sometimes you might want to so, sometimes you'll do this and you'll forget that you're even taking an integral. So um, you want to be careful with that. Now notice again, look, I've got that trig function sitting out here. Okay, so if I do want to take the integral, I can just let u equal cosine x, and then my du will be negative sine x dx, okay, and so on. So, like that. So here we go. My uh, Our next... Uh, scenario is what I call the worst case scenario because uh, the the identities aren't really that good. Um, they're they're kind of they're kind of foggy. Um, they're not you know they're not as pretty as as those uh, Pythagorean identities. They have fractions in them. And what usually helps out too, like ch like take for instance this bottom one. A lot of times uh, you might benefit from rewriting this. Um, in this form right there, okay? And usually keeping all those in parentheses. Um, also, one other case uh, I want to mention is that when you do have a cosine squared x, or sine for that matter, it doesn't, it doesn't matter either way, um, on these, on these, on these identities right here, um, say you had cosine squared of two x. We're well, gonna come over here and you're gonna double your angle. Okay, so we'll double this angle and we get four x over two right there. Okay, so um, basically, um, you know, we kind of went just to go over uh, summarize. Um, if you have all strictly odd powers um, in your integral, um, just go ahead and try a direct u substitution first. See what happens there, okay? And then if you have one of them that's even and one of them that's odd, go ahead and, and experiment with the Pythagorean identity first and apply that to the odd one, okay? Go ahead and let's make a note. Let's apply the to the odd trig, trig function. Try that first and see how that works. And then we got uh, the the single odd trig function right there. Um, you know, and, and just like, you know, I said on the uh, previous example, you know, the odd power usually gets the identity. Well, we only have an odd power here and voila, it gets the identity. Um, and then here we go, you know, like I said, the worst case scenario, they're both even. Uh, sine squared x, cosine squared x, could be sine to the fourth x, cosine to the fourth x. Uh, one could be raised to the fourth power, one could be raised to the uh, second power. Um, they, could, they could be different for sure, and this would still work. So uh, go ahead and just... Um, you know, uh, c copy those examples down. Not You don't have to fill out, do all the work behind them, but just kind of, you know, write down, you know, the little orange uh, marker notes that I wrote there, and then we'll, then we'll attack some of these in the next video, okay? Thanks.